quorum. I'm going to call the meeting to order and we'll stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Before I get started, do we have any public input today? Max? I would like to ask all of you, as you begin the budget process, to think about possibly coming up with a budget that spends less than last year. Thank you. Thank you, Max. Anyone else? Any more public input? No? Also, thanks for doing public at the beginning. Right. And we do it at the end as well. Great. Thanks. Um, as far as Chairman's comments, I just want to say um, I apologize if um, you didn't get a chance to go through all the materials. I thought it was in our best interest as a budget committee to um, have Clay and Steve on suits and have a little bit of surgery coming up, so that would have pushed you way out until November probably before we get to talk to you, and Clay's been ready. So um, I guess what I was thinking was if you're really feeling you're not prepared enough to vote, at least we're going to hear the presentations from the um, department heads, committee heads, and we can table until you have a chance to go through materials if you haven't had a chance. So at this time, we'll start with our first appointment, and that is Mr. Steve Lincoln. We'll have to have you bring your own chair up, I guess, Steve. <laughs> Welcome. He's here. <laughs> what say you, sir? Well, I, I, I could start with telling you what we did with last year's budget. That would be a good place well, to start. Well, I should say still this year's budget. We continued our well water testing program. We continue to be the uh, have the largest percentage of participation of households in the state in testing our well water, and we need to because it's about a 25% chance that somebody has something in their well water that is going to affect their health mm -hmm. later on or their, their children. Um, we've been working hard on the natural resource section of the master plan. We have, uh, we're working on uh, two easements right now uh, with uh, two landowners who are donating uh, conservation easements for their land. We, and we, we're also talking to two other landowners who are considering donations. Uh, we continue to work on the Great Metal Project and we're negotiating for two properties there from uh, people who don't want an easement, but they are interested in selling, mm -hmm. and they're uh, a very high priority uh, pieces for you know, making that a good unit. Uh, we participate with the Wolfboro Tufton Road Land Bank, attending all of their meetings and participate in their activities. We uh, finance the Lay Lakes Monitoring Program, and many of our Conservation Commissioners are also Lay Lake volunteers. That means they go out at least once a month in uh, mm -hmm. one of our lakes and take water samples and turn them in. We uh, obtained uh, grant funding for uh, $65,000 for a watershed plan, and then the town voted to uh, put in a $15,000 match last year. It's that's now in the final stages of getting here. Uh, probably the Governor's Council, that's the last approval it needs, and then we're likely to kick that off in uh, January. And one of the first activities is to arrange a committee that provides oversight to the process. Uh, we participate in the Mirror Lake uh, Watershed Committee. And uh, we do we uh, 
provide uh, on-site uh, inspection for DES permits, uh, wetlands permits. Is, these are primarily docks or perch beaches, oh. those kind of things. Uh -huh. uh, we don't actually determine anything. We just uh, look at the permit and ensure that everything is presented accurately. And then DES actually decides whether to approve it or not. Uh -huh. Uh, we, are, we continue to monitor the Polporo uh, Rapid Infiltration Basin that uh, is leaking uh, effluent into a 19 mile brook and they have a new plan to uh, mitigate that so we've been monitoring that. We, uh, we've worked with parks and recs on uh, trail maintenance as well as uh, some ideas for the town D. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did a, a a major activity at Old Home Days to get kids involved in uh, thinking about conservation, and a lot of adults participated too. It looked like it was pretty successful. And uh, we also, if anybody's looked at the uh, interactive map program on the on, our, on the uh, Conservation Commission website, that's, that's something we continue to work on and try to improve. Well, that's pretty much the list of stuff we did last year. You've been busy. Yeah. And looking ahead to next year, <coughs> um, I know I had a couple of questions. Does anybody else want to jump in before I talk? Um, I, I was noticing um, the $2,000 jump in acquisitions and monitoring, and that's for Mr. Poole, correct? For yeah, grant writing? Yeah. And then Vanderpool. Or Vanderpool. Yeah. And am I correct in that you can can you include the amount that he charges for that yes. in the grant? Yes. I thought I heard you say that the other day. And, and it's, it's, it's two grants that would be applied over two properties. So it's a it's, it's a little more complicated than a, a one grant. Okay. Uh, we did we did consider doing this ourselves. We try to do as much as we can ourselves. Uh, that's why sometimes we we leave some money in some of our fund. But it, it's uh, very competitive today. There aren't a lot of grants uh, out there, and everybody's learning how to apply for them. And uh, mm -hmm. Rick did all of the original analysis of the, the Great Meadow uh, environmental analysis. So uh, he knows everything there. So we, we, we consider this to be a great investment to, to use him for this. Yes. Um, and then the other question I had, and I, I think I'm clear on what the negative $336.99 is, but I didn't know if anybody else had any questions about why that was a negative. That was uh, some work Rick Vanderpool did for, him, for us last year, which was uh, actually coming to our meeting and laying out what the different grant opportunities were and what he could do for us. And also, uh, he did some uh, a range of estimating for a range of different types of work. So we wanted to actually be able to say what, uh, what he will do for us and do as much of it as we can for ourselves. Uh, and we apparently paid him twice. Okay. So um, once that uh, somebody figured that out, and I'm, I don't remember now how that went, but uh, we asked him to rip up one of the checks he did, and that's how it got accounted for. Okay, but really, it's a positive. It's really a positive, rather than a negative. Yeah. Okay. Does anybody else want to jump in? Any questions well, I was, um since you've only spent 49% of your budget and we're 75% of the way through the year, and then you're asking for a 14% increase over last year's budget, so I felt that there might be some room in there for us. It probably Pencil is. Pencil sharpening. Yeah. We, uh, we went through the process. There are, there are things where we estimated last year that uh, we wound up doing with volunteers instead of paying for it. That's part of the way it happens. Uh, 
other things like like mailing expenses. It, it's, it's hard to predict. It all depends on what kind of activity you have with uh, uh, some of the landowners who are interested in talking to us, or uh, whether we want to go out and uh, uh, look at a neighborhood, or whether we need to inform people that we're considering a particular activity. There. So that's a, it's kind of a it's kind of a hard one. Yeah, we could probably could. And we still have, um, because of the, what happened with the um, planning board, the master plan is kind of behind. So there's, there's still a lot of master, master plan work that we thought would be done by now. And that's primarily our secretary, Leanne. I, We've probably written 90% of what needs to for the natural resource part. Uh, once it all gets put together, I'm sure we're going to see a couple of places where we want to stick something in. And, and all the commissioners uh, work together to do all that writing. But Leanne does all the editing. And then she, bet between uh, planning board and us, she puts it together. So there's a lot of her time there, plus the easements we're working on, uh, there's, there's going to be a lot of her time there from uh, actually drawing up the easements that we're negotiating with. She will eventually type those up into an official format and then she will record those when they're final. And they'll probably be, you know, we, I, I have some appointments uh, coming up to do the negotiation on these two parcels that we're trying to purchase. So I think that's right around the corner, and once we make some progress there, there'll be some some more time for Leanne to do. So I expect some more, quite a bit of her time to be charged before the end of the year. And then the other one is uh, Rick Vanderpool, and uh, he he spends a lot of time out in the field when the weather's nice in the summer, and then he once. You know, the, the days start getting shorter. He starts catching up on most of the things he's doing for us. Are uh, it's less about uh, field time and more about paperwork. So uh, we expect him to uh, charge or bill up for more time between now and the end of the year. And I think that's the majority of it. Otherwise, it's it's small pieces here and there. Oh, what about the water monitoring? Because that's yes, we're um, through that. And that's all, almost all of that money goes to UNH because mm -hmm. they do all the lab work, and they they wait till the end of the year and bill us oh. once. Okay. And sometimes we do a little pestering to make sure it, it actually comes in before the end of the year. Could you <coughs> talk to me a little bit more about the environmental study for 19 Mount Brook? Is Wolfboro partnering? or anything with that study or I mean when I first heard about it I thought well is all of this coming from Wolfboro which is the third it's of it. responsibility but it, it all affects us yes so we try to lean on Wolfboro uh, saying you should do this you should do that uh, the latest opportunity uh, their, their permit doesn't, does not require them to test for uh, things like pharmaceuticals, things like uh, personal care products. We're putting a lot of pollution into our sewage stream today from some of these products we buy and use mm -hmm. uh, that they've never been tested to see what happens once you, you, know, you flush a lot of it out and it gets in the water system and, mm -hmm. then, and in our case, it winds up in our lake, which is kind of the base of our economy. So it's something we're concerned about. There have been some studies, and indeed, some of these products are harmful to water quality. Uh, the U.S. Geological Survey is responsible for doing this as far as uh, the country goes. Uh, New Hampshire DES talks to them, and two studies have done, been done in New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. And one of our conservation commission members has a background in this kind of work, and uh, he contacted them and said, hey, could you look at you know, Wolfsboro's RIV? Uh, and they said, possibly, we can apply for a grant to do that. 
through our own agency, and uh, they have done this, but it requires a match from Wolfboro. I don't know where Dave Ford is with, as I, I think he's going to apply for it, but uh, who knows whether it'll get through their budget process or not. Mm -hmm. If that goes, we will probably try to establish a testing location of our own on uh, 19 Mile Brook before it, it gets into the, um, the wetland backwater there. So we can actually see what's coming downstream. Is that something UNH helps with? Or? No. No, they, well, they can't do the pharmaceuticals and uh, personal care uh, items to do that kind of thing. We would, we would establish that one to monitor phosphorus and nitrates. We have no, uh, no ability to pressure Wolfboro in terms of, uh, of doing appropriate testing when they're, they're dumping it into, into uh, Down Arm Brook? Our, our ability is through talking to DES who uh, approves or disapproves of their permit applications. They actually, they, they do what they do on Wolf, on the Wolfboro side of the town line. If you've been reading the paper, you know that they got some bad engineering advice and it didn't work as planned. And uh, we've been involved in this all the way. And I know Dave has done everything he can to uh, control this. And they, uh, their testing that they do, which they give us access to, is well within the permit requirements. The only thing that they're not... Uh, uh, the, the requirement they don't make is the permit says they put it in the soil and then it comes, it's filtered by the soil and then enters the stream naturally that through the soil. Mm -hmm. Well, there are places where it's broken out of the hillside and then it kind of runs as a stream and then it enters 19 mile brook. Well, that violates the permit. So it, DES has given them some time both because of the lawsuit and because of the need to come up with a new plan to, to try to solve this. Mm -hmm. And I, I was, this is my opinion. I think DES would like to see this kind of sewage treatment be successful because there's a lot of communities around the state that this is the only way they can do it and, and not actually put it into a stream, is to get it, to somehow put it in the ground. And small communities, like Wolfboro, there's only so much they can do is in sewage treatment. Larger communities can do a little more, uh, mm -hmm. can go after some of those. Uh, there are a few pharmaceuticals they can treat for, and there are some of the personal care items they, could, they can treat for. But, uh, and they can do a lot more with uh, phosphorus and nitrates. But Wolfboro is already doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, they are already meet, meet that. It's, it's the one thing that they don't need is that breaks out of the hillside and goes into the stream. So they came up with a new plan to collect all of that as it comes out of the hillside, and then they're going to redirect it and put it in the soil in another location, and, they're, and then they're going to test to make sure it's still getting filtered by the, by the soil. So we're monitoring that. Okay, so that's what this $400 would go for, to somehow monitor that, or? The $400 would be if, we're, if we establish a site lower on 19 mile park where we can collect our own data. And some of that is, uh, you, uh, wetlands do a lot of mitigation for mm -hmm. the things that we put in water. And we have a lot of wetlands, uh, different sections of 19 mile park. It, uh, the, and then we have the town beach, and, which would great concern. You know, you have the water's coming out here and the town beach is right there. Yeah. And that's where we send our, our kids to, to swim and, and who doesn't get a gulp of water when you're having fun. Yeah. So uh, we want to know what the actual effect is at that location. But we have to, we have to get a volunteer. And we, we'd like to see, um, I, th I think we can get a volunteer. I, we, uh, we'd like to see what happens with this uh, pharmaceutical personal care item thing because it it's, might be possible that we can take a sample there and turn it over to uh, to them for for analysis. So, so we're kind of waiting to see that before we 
jump into that. But it, and it's also it have, wasn't in our budget for this year, so mm -hmm. it'd be something we'd start next spring if we do it. Thank you for explaining that to me. Anything else from the committee? Sure, I have a question. Um, acquisitions and monitoring. So you're raising it from 3,000 to 5,000. Um, but you say that you have some contract services with Rick, um, but they're already in process. Do you think you're going to be able to spend? Because it's only 920 now. And in the past, I don't think we've ever spent anything really. Um, it's been zeros. So, do you think we'll spend the three thousand this year to finish that stuff? Do we need the five thousand? Is that to do more next year, or is that to do we, the same? We built. Stuff? We put the two things together uh, when we made the request. So, some of what Rick would be doing this fall leads into it. <coughs> it's not actually going through the application process. It's it's uh, collecting some of the data. Another thing uh, Rick suggested that uh, sounds good to us is. Uh, we can become more competitive if we have uh, some of the uh, landowners, some of the surrounding landowners participating, say, with a conservation easement. And uh, Rick has been talking to some of those landowners for years to do the various studies that we've had him do in the, uh, in the Great Meadow area. So uh, he, he, he feels confident that he can bring some of those people around when we, when we have it. Been able to. We've tried to get in a couple of those doors and it's been us. So you think we'll need a total of 8,000 to do all that? Because three this year, three this year and five remains next. this year and yes, what we're asking for for next year. It is, that's not entirely Vic Vanderpool, but this, the majority of it. Are there some legal fees in order yeah, to transfer the property and that kind of thing yeah. rolled into that? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I. And we don't see. I know I'm, I'm sensitive to increasing the budget too. We don't see this as next year we'd be back saying, and and how about another two thousand? <laughs> yeah. This is a a one time thing that we estimated. I don't know of any other purchase opportunities in the Great Meadows, uh, Great Meadow coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, we've known about the two we're working on now for a couple of years, actually. So uh, I, I see us going back down in that area unless um, a new opportunity pops up. We have right now we're talking to a landowner who has 94 acres who um, feels he he's, uh, can't donate an easement. But he, he'd like to sell us an easement. It's a desirable place to have an easement. It could be possibly we we come and ask to uh, to finance something there. But mm -hmm. uh, I don't right now. I don't see anything. So the increase in that line, the way you're viewing it right now, though, it's a, <coughs> it's up two thousand dollars, and this is a one-time deal for these two properties. Mm -hmm. They're not going to keep adding on to that number. I, unless, unless some other great opportunity comes up, I see it going down. Mm -hmm. But those, you said those are in process though, right? Those, those, uh, the contracts for those easements here. Okay, here so the, yeah, the way this works is in order to apply for grant funding to pay for a purchase of property, we have to have a uh, purchase agreement with those landlords. You know, we have to prove that we actually have an opportunity to spend this grant money on what we say we want to do. So that's the, that's the first step is to get that purchase agreement negotiated and that's going to allow for enough time to apply for these grants and wait for an answer. And the, the grant period start in May and June, I believe, if my memory is correct. And we would find out whether we actually get funds in, uh, I believe, uh, like end of August, early, uh, end of July, early August, or in September period, that the two grant sources we're going after. So we, so we have to build that into the purchase agreement so that time is covered. Once we have a purchase agreement, then we can go ahead and uh, apply for the grant. <coughs> That's, I mean, that, Purchase agreement, I guess you could say, is ongoing. Uh, we're not, we haven't applied for any grants. We just anticipate 
applying for grants, which would primarily occur next year. Where does the grant funding uh, uh, show up in, in terms of its uh, income? Uh, when the grant comes in and its distribution, where does that show up in our... I and believe how does that offset, yeah. it, uh, offset up the expenses? I believe they would go into the uh, conservation fund, which you don't see here. The conservation fund is a different... Is, uh, is that detailed in terms of the actual income from these kinds of expenditures that uh, when, when grants are received? I, don't, I, don't I just understand. wonder if there's a balance, or do we know you know, if we're spending the dollars up front, are we getting those dollars back and then yeah. some, or are we just, or, or is it we costing us money, or? We anticipated uh, covering the cost and uh, actually covering Rick Vanderpool's cost. That's what we anticipate. But there's no, there's, 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 there's no leverage in terms of the income actually benefiting the expenditures, we, we don't make any money on this at all. Technically, you wouldn't make any money on it. There would probably be more money in the conservation fund left over when the whole thing, when the whole thing is done. Because the town actually expended some funds to pay for Brick Vanderpool, we got compensated for Brick Vanderpool, and that money would be in the conservation fund. Mm -hmm. If we had more money in the conservation fund right now, I wouldn't be asking for this. Yes. From it's, it's uh, Rick Vanderbilt's time as a and uh, applying for grants is a legitimate uh, charge against the conservation fund. We have kind of a minimum balance in there right now. What what's a minimum balance? <laughs> I think um, five. We're in the five thousand dollar category. And, and we're actually, we're going to spend a little of that, um, I think, <coughs> on some of these easements. Okay. Anything else, John? Anybody else? I, I can say that uh, I actually went to Diane and I said, Gee, these categories really don't fit what we're doing. Mm -hmm. It's hard to, to say where the dollars are going because it's just like uh, for the administrative secretary, I would fill her time according to what she's doing. So administration is only, you know, keeping uh, uh, minutes at the meetings and things like that. That's how, that's how I would run it. Mm -hmm. So I went to Diane to see and said, let's change some of these names and numbers. <laughs> so I the can't state do says that. you can't do that. State <laughs> mandates. Yeah, so, yeah. so sometimes you're squeezing money over here and, you're, yeah. and then you've got a broad category over there. And, and having a grant writer under acquisitions and monitoring to me didn't make sense either, but that's the way it is. And, and sorry, just one last question. Where do you project that the bottom number is going to be total expenses for the end of this year? Where do you think we'll be? So we're at $8,900 right now. Where do you think we'll be? Yeah, total yeah. budget request would be... Uh, Not the budget request, your total oh. actual expenditures yeah. for 2017. Where do you think we're going to end? Are you going to spend another ten thousand dollars? Yeah. Where, where do you think? Like, what do they project the expenses you've still got coming up? Like, what do you think we're going to just ballpark them? You don't have to be the right to me, but if, if you look at our track record, we we would we probably won't spend everything. That's that's the honest answer. But it, it's 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 <coughs> not it's not padded. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, uh, add an extra 5% contingency just in case. It's, it's not that kind of a budget. It's, we, we did try to add up everything we thought we might have to spend money on. But we're not going to try to spend every dime that we're authorized to spend. We're only going to spend what we really think we have to. Could you cut a little bit in publications and conferences? We've spent 595 By now, do you have another Yes, we have the uh, uh, New Hampshire Association of Conservation Commission uh, annual meeting that's coming in, uh, coming up in November, and that will probably uh, finish out that account. Mm -hmm. okay. are, are you saying that because of state regulations, you cannot come up with detailed 
accounting and I'm just, just saying it's difficult. It's, it's difficult to do the math sometimes with the categories you have to work with. We're still spending twenty thousand, twenty thousand dollars. Okay. Anything else for Mr. Wingate? I'd make the, <clears throat> make the motion that we table any vote on uh, this particular budget and any budget that includes salaries until we've had a chance to review the personnel administration budget and most likely approve it. Can you tell me, are you, this includes, this doesn't include any benefits though? That's true. However, it includes a salary which is part of the personnel administration budget. Which has already been I've not seen it. I've not voted on it. I haven't discussed it. I've done it. <clears throat> I, one, of the, one of the questions I have, um, you won't find her in the administrative budget. Okay. Because she's individual to each of the third floors. Would this which be? I'm not certain is the most efficient way to handle mm -hmm. this particular person. So would this be similar to the line item for the road agents? Stipend, I'll call it, which is not a salary? Probably program. more more like the planning board's um, okay. administrative mm -hmm. assistant. I'll withdraw my motion. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Chip. Yep. Thank you. Good And it's going to be, it's not, we haven't stopped asking questions about this particular line item no, at the select. So and I think that's a, a good thing to bring up, Chip, because anything we would vote on tonight if we choose to vote on this budget, we can revisit. Sure. We're going to be revisiting probably right up until public hearing on things. So do I have a motion to approve this budget as it stands? So moved. Okay. Do I have a second? No second. All in favor? Hmm? Yes, you vote. And John, no. Okay. So we have a 6-1. Okay, John, did you want, are you comfortable sharing your no vote <clears throat> so you can teach us something? Sure, well, I'm not going to teach anything. I just, based on what we've actually spent in the past, the most we've ever spent was 13000 I, I would think more would be along, along the lines of just approving what we spent last year. I just to bump it up two grand, I get the five thousand, three thousand, five thousand, but just historically, I mean, you've clearly done a good job not spending what you've asked for, but I just to bump it up, I just don't see that we need to do that, even with the increase in payroll. Okay, and I, I thought the increase was um, mainly for the grant writer. <coughs> for this portion. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> Thank you very Here much. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thank you very much. All right, next on board, Clay. We'll try to be gentle. Forty-three, <laughs> twenty-four. Yes. And I have a little sheet for everybody. It's an update to uh, after I went through the oh, selectmen. All right, good. Um, I updated. I, I, you know, everybody has their own way of doing things, and it is prescribed how the budget lines have to be and all that. But I, I if you see what I go through to get there, it's easier to understand, I think. Mm -hmm. But it should answer a lot of your questions. <coughs> um, the, the first page is uh, is basically an overview of all the budget lines in my particular budget mm -hmm. that I control. Um, and what I did was uh, <clears throat> you have the 2017 budget numbers in there. Um, and then on the left side of that, I put whether it was going to be the same, go up or go down with the arrows. And then the right column uh, penned in is the 2018 proposed budget. <coughs> the one thing I 
would caution is out to the right hand side you have better information on your charts than, than I have on these as far as the updated or the actual expenses to date. On the bottom of the page I put the summary um, where the labor lines, the four labor lines, uh, what that totals up to, um, the anything with an up arrow, uh, CD plastic and MSW I combine together, up arrow, landfill monitor or uh, closure monitoring, uh, up arrow, tires and safety, and I, and I put the reason out to the right. Don't have to go into too much detail right now until we get through the, the four pages. The second page is a combined budget where we have electric heat and transfer station maintenance. <clears throat> and on the second, uh, on the bottom of that, um, I put the labor increase, the, the other budget lines that I control increase, and this page, no change. And what the 2018 proposed budget for the transfer station is up $14,114 or 3.8%. Um, for the details, that's for the, those two pages, for, and the, the, uh, the next page, the third page, goes to the four labor lines, and I'd like to do a little explanation of how I got uh, to that increase. On the left-hand side is the current uh, uh, grade and step and position of the four uh, lines that I have. Um, the next column is hours per week. That's the hours we work per week. Uh, down the per diem line, I have three per diem uh, people, uh, 16 weeks, 7 hours a day, 28 hours per week. The hours per year for each of those is the next column. And then the additional hours, which I've added each year, and it's worked out, and we've gotten closer and closer as time goes along. Um, and underneath there, I put all of the items that add up to those extra hours. So the justification for those additional hours is in the, all the reasons at the bottom, training, certification, mileage, um, meetings, boards, you know, like this meeting here, mm -hmm. uh, loading trucks on off days, maintenance, um, uh, uh, coverage for vacation and sick days, paperwork, paperwork um, non-planned meetings, so we move, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I'll go into that. So, okay. the, Okay. So, um, are the extra hours here the primary big jump in the... No, uh, I'll get to that in okay. the... It's a small amount, and the only line that was affected that, that this jump is the three per diem guys. Right. And that's because we we have gotten more longevity, so we get more vacation time okay. and more uh, sick time. So, uh, I've added that, or people are starting to use those hours, um, so I added uh, an increase in the per diem line only, uh, not in any of any other lines, uh, for coverage for those things. And uh, the next line, uh, uh, line is uh, grand total hours for those four lines. The 2017 apportion of appropriated amounts added up to 131,508. <clears throat> the 2017 hourly wage for each line. Um, I uh, applied the COLA through the chart and uh, step raise. The reason there's a step raise for everybody is I've done uh, efficiency reports for everybody. Um, and every single person at the transfer station went up a grade level this year in our training requirements. So, um, and they all uh, continue to perform, to perform uh, I think, at a, very, at a very, very, very good level. Um, the 2018 new hourly wage, that's moving that individuals up one step, um, and in the, the first block, uh, grade uh, 13, step 15, if you flip to the next page, what most people don't understand when you use these matrices, and you have a uh, study like we had a few years ago, mm -hmm. they establish a range for your job which is the advantage, one of the major advantages of using this kind of a matrix uh, in the workforce is you have a beginning and an end state. And if you're an hourly employee or even a salaried employee, um, once you reach the top of your category, you're done. You're capped. Um, this year, I'm capped. 
So that's it. And all I will get from now on is COLA unless I have a job title change or increased responsibilities or um, they ask me to do more stuff. Um, uh, not that I'm asking for that. I'm plenty satisfied exactly where, where I am. But uh, that is one thing you need to take into consideration mm -hmm. in future budgets for, uh, for all the departments. Is uh, You shouldn't go past the, past the cap for a for month. Um, so if you go back to the previous page, um, with one step and uh, COLA, um, the totals add up to 136, 172, uh, and the overall labor increase is 3.5%. If you figured it was just the 1.2% COLA and a 2% step raise, it should be 3.2. Um, but it's 3.5 because of the three tenths of the added hours I added on to the the uh, uh, per diem employees. So now if you flip back to the first page, um, what I did was I summarized up all those at the bottom where the labor's up 46.64, the other individual lines are up 9,450, and that works out to up $14,114 or 3.8% total for the transfer station. Now, the major increases on this are due to, uh, and, and you understand, we are a cost-driven uh, operation. So whatever our costs are to get rid of it, that's what we have to budget for. Um, and the, look, the CD, the plastic, the MSW, the landfill monitor, the closure monitor, tire safety, have all gone up. Um, and, and they put the explanation to the right down below. Uh, waste management has increased their fees. Um, uh, the only unusual one is that uh, as far as closure monitor on the landfill, um, everybody's probably familiar with uh, a year and a half ago down in the southeast they had, they found this PC polyfluorocarbons mm -hmm. carbons. And, and uh, they put out a uh, notice to all people in the landfills that they should be looking at those items in particular. So we went to Stantec. Um, Stantec put a proposal forward, which the selectmen agreed on, um, and sent it to DES as a proposed um, monitoring and, and test for these items. Uh, which includes testing the water well there because mm -hmm. it's so close to the landfill, um, our well, uh, and numerous points around the facility. Mm -hmm. And they came up with a, that's going to be a one year, when you were talking to the previous gentleman, uh, you know, it's a one year increase by $3,600. And that's why that line went up $3,600. Um, and it should revert back to close to 9,000 after next year. And I see, um, I'm sorry, did okay. I interrupt your presentation? Uh, there's some, uh, I get asked the same question every year, so I'll just jump right just to it. Just jump right in. Um, the fuel line down below, you'll see there's 0%. Mm -hmm. There are a couple lines with 0%. Um, and and uh, we don't get our fuel until mid-December, mm -hmm. um, and we have to come up and fill up the tank because it's at, it's got the additive in it for the diesel for the winter, um, and so we wait right until December 15th to get that, uh, or whenever they they put the additive in, and uh, and then uh, we'll go from there. Um, the brush and stump grinding I held off on that. We still are filling our our brush hill. A little bit with Phil from uh, Jim Bean has brought quite a few truckloads in. I mix some brush in, brush in with it, and we, we're, we're fixing the hill. So we haven't used that brush line, um, and this is the second year we haven't used it. So we've saved some money. Last year we went over on the CD quite a bit, yeah. uh, and I had to stop on a couple lines to, to try to make up as best I could for that. Um, and, and it's the same thing with the uniform. 
And there are some items like waste management, um, the electric, the heat, where we get the standard monthly bills. Um, right now, you know, we should be at 75% uh, going on the next, the next hike. We're always a month behind on that. So the numbers uh, we should be equating to is, is, unless I've gotten the bill in, we've got nine monthly bills, um, then, then you can look at 75%. Uh, And you made um, a couple of good sized jumps in C and D disposal. And yes, that was W disposal. Uh, that was a, a discussion with the selectmen mm -hmm. um, where we didn't want to get caught short. Uh, again, the the volume of construction debris. I must use a soap that attracts these fruit flies. Um, the the um, CD has continually. Uh, gone up, and the MSW has gone up too. That associated and accompanied by the waste management increase in fees, um, and we're, we're looking real close at that. And, and after a discussion, um, I agreed that we should add a little bit okay. to the CD line and the uh, and the MSW line. But you won't be using the brush and stump grinding at all. Uh, not this year. Uh, well. Well. Not this year. Not this year, um, but you might. I, next year. I will start next year with it. Okay. What, so I don't want to lose that line because we we have to do that. We're not. Last year, did you do a um, or is it a different budget line? You did something that showed what you're going to be projecting to make to offset all this stuff. Did you do? Yes. Yeah, so well, right now. Can I do that? Uh, oh no, that that comes later on. Okay. Um, that's uh, the the uh, avoided costs yeah, okay. chart that I add to the revenues. I can tell you right now we're twenty five thousand dollars ahead in revenue than we were last year. That's exciting. At the same time, we we're at about eighty three thousand dollars right now. So my goal my goal was to to shoot for a hundred thousand in revenue. Mm -hmm. um, the I think we'll fall a little bit short of that. The price of mixed paper and cardboard has tanked mm -hmm. and gone down again. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and we'll have one more truckload shipment of each. Mm -hmm. um, so we're not going to get quite as much revenue from that. Scrap metal is also tanked. Um, there's there's all kinds of problems with China on on this uh, northern sort or whatever they call it, mm -hmm. where they're not buying uh, commodities. So. Um, and we still have a Far East market, um, and I work with uh, three brokers right now mm -hmm. uh, to get the best price that we possibly can. So, um, That's why you need to be online. Yeah, and <laughs> yes, <laughs> and LRPC is, uh, has even asked me to come over and present twice now at their uh, training seminars, um, where we had we've had about 15 towns with probably six or seven selectmen. And the rest, operators and uh, facility owners, um, you know, trying to explain how we get more out of our assets, and we're not mandatory recycling <laughs> than some of the places that are mandatory recycling that are similar size. Clean Wagner's uh, line NRRA. NRA, and that, uh, that's the. Uh, Northeast Resource and Recovery Association, that's okay. down in Concord. All right. uh, I work with Bonnie down there, she's our, our rep, and they're the one They're one of the brokers that we have. We used to work um, almost exclusively with them, uh, but we had some problems with some trucking companies and, and a few other things where I jumped ship and, and got better deals. Mm -hmm. So now they're coming back around. Um, and. and you know, she's giving us the best price she can get. So. And that line uh, has a, had a significant uh, bump. We just we just got a check in today uh, from it was about they're they're about five or six weeks behind from when we do business, but the, the ninety ninety eight hundred dollars something like that for aluminum cans. So. Um, that was a nice, nice. Uh, that's nice. Check in, mm -hmm. and that's not included in the line. Uh, 
So where does your revenue stream show up? Um, that's in the, the matrix that I that I uh, well, we have present. On the yeah, that, yeah it, that comes under the the, the, the town. Okay. It's a separate. Yeah. It's sixty-four thousand showing right now. Right, okay. uh, and that's because there's certain things that are counted and certain things that aren't counted. I count everything that produces revenue as revenue. Uh, that, so sure. my count against our lines may be different than the, right. the mandatory reporting right. lines for revenue. But you're up 25000 over where you were this time last year. Right. Okay. Doing well, it the same way I do. Yeah, 32000 Right. Yeah. <laughs> Good. So, um, and then I will also uh, produce that same thing with the avoided costs. So if we make, nice. if we make $90,000, $92,000, $94,000, $20,000 of avoided costs, then, you know, we're, we're getting up there covering our labor, so. Mm -hmm. Which I is my goal. appreciate the breakdown on everything that you do. Like, it makes sense. Oh, thank you. It makes it easier to understand. Right, and, and, and when, you know, I, I know you were one of the people that asked for that chart that had all the, the benefits on at one time, it's easy when you have a visual that you can see mm -hmm. from the from the perspective of how I make money, yeah. um, because your perspective is is, is uh, from the opposite direction of mine, mm -hmm. um, and the way I I look at it is it's my own checkbook, and if I, I if I operate that way, I can't ever make those things. So are you, are you running your department like you run your household? No. <laughs> are you taking in rescues? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They do. I dogs. tell you what. They, if I run out of dog bones, boy, boy. <laughs> boy I'm in trouble. I got Did you have a question, John? Or no? No, I think I was going to refer back to Guy's earlier comment on the salaries. That's all. Until we agree on the COLA, I guess. Well, so do we want to table this and jump into that conversation? Be yeah, just to, make, just to move it on. So yeah, yeah, yeah we because we, have, we should have a conversation. I think we should have a conversation. I didn't have it on the agenda because I thought everyone knew what was what had taken place and what the departments were instructed, the department heads were instructed to do. So um, let's have the conversation and maybe Clay can participate in that conversation. Okay, let's do it. Did you want to start, Guy? We, I would have personally insisted that we do personnel administration first and we don't have any of these issues. Uh, if that can't be decided, in time, I guess we have no choice but to wait. I don't see how we could possibly vote on a budget that includes salaries until we have approved personnel administration budget. I'm not sure I understand why. Well, by the time we got done doing all the budgets and got to personnel administration, it would already be approved because we did the salaries already. Do I have any other input here? I'm not an accountant, but John is, and I'm sure he understands what I'm talking about. We, <coughs> the selectmen, reviewed a lot of information to establish the call that we gave to the department heads. As far as the health insurance, if that's part of the question you're posing. It's part of it, but not all of it. We don't have a, a next year's prices yet, mm -hmm. and we will at the, sometime the end of October, they, they're telling us, so we can't really establish what that premium cost is going to be. We've looked at four different um, health insurance providers and we're still waiting for all of the numbers to come in. So that's not here yet. Um, the COLA was just based on the Northeast. Uh, I'm aware of how that's done. Yeah. Uh, my problem with that is I'm not sure that it's necessarily enough or specific enough to Tufton Brook. I realize that this Northeast average takes into account Boston, uh, it takes into account Errol, it takes into account town T10 in Maine. However, we can't buy gasoline here. We generally have to travel out of town. Where do we fall in that average? We call it may not be enough in my opinion. Uh, uh, I, I agree we're going to have to do something, and if the selectmen are recommending that, we'll have to vote on that, of course. 
but uh, I'm not sure that it actually works as well as it might for the town of Dutton. Girl. That's all I have. Are you thinking a higher cola? What I have done is I've taken the suggestion that the transfer station superintendent made a long time ago, and I went to Hannaford's and other places, and I took common items that have been around a while, like Wonder Bread and a gallon of gasoline on August 1st, and I wrote down the prices. Next year on August 1st, I'll go back to those same places and write down those prices again, and then I'll see just exactly how much of an increase has come and what I can figure from that. And I think that would be a much better indication of what our town employees actually have as a cost of living increase or decrease, however it may come. That's just my personal opinion, but mm -hmm. I think that gives us a much better idea of what our town employees face versus what they may in Boston, where they could actually walk to some place without having to go 10 miles or, you know, the like. Chip, could you um, share with us how COLA was determined by the Board of Selectmen? We were, I, Lloyd might be a better answer. We used the same method we did the last three years. It was a cooperative effort with past uh, boards. And uh, at the last meeting, an individual said, will you have a decision you know, sometime in September? And mm -hmm. We kept our word. Yeah. It's a, it was, the, and I honestly, I didn't think we were going to talk about it tonight. Or I wasn't going to have a discussion, the, but I just the, thought we uh, can't vote yet. It's a technical term for the Northeast cost of living index. Sure. So did you, you got it as of like what September? Right. Yeah. I think that's what we agreed on. Yeah, that's what we agreed on. So in fact, it was yeah. even closer to 1.3 if I remember, but the board decided to do 1.2. Correct. You can't possibly no. in, look at each individual item that goes into the whole COLA concept. No, I think just last year we agreed that we would, yeah, as long as we can look, look at it, it we can print it and it says 1.2 right. of September, yeah. then okay yeah. with you, that. you can't right. analyze it on, on, a, on a statistical basis. I, I don't and see the, how you could possibly do that. I mean, what has, and one, of the things, it. one of the things that has been taken off the table after some discussion was the mandatory step increases. So from my perspective, you, you get a cost of living increase, but you're also getting a step increase, or all our employees are getting step increases for longevity and whatever. And for I, merit, except for clay, for instance, now that is. Well, I don't well, know if the clay deserves it. In every place that I've worked, mm -hmm. um, um, you know, there, it's easier to say you're not performing and you're not going to get a step increase, okay? Mm -hmm. We can debate all day long about um, the, are you always going to have to get better? Is your physical score on your efficiency report 29? Okay, you didn't get 30 this year, you know, got 29 again, or you got 28, but the standard is 13. So does he justify a merit increase or not? Mm -hmm. It's easier to say you're not performing up to standards mm -hmm. and you're not going to get a step increase. Mm -hmm. That's hard to do for managers. Yeah. So and um, the, the other element that always seems to get forgotten is the replacement cost. So exactly. if you have an employee who's One been and for four or five years or ten years, what's it cost to replace that employee? It's one and a half. One and a half times, and the reason is because it's not just replacing that employee, but that's a 50-50 shot at best to get a quality employee, but you have to pair somebody with them, so you have to count all that time. Um, you got to train them, you got to teach them, you got to bring them up to a level, and, and then it's a 50-50 shot. So you may have to replace three times to get the right person, um, and it averages out over time to be about, and, and when I ran a factory, it was, it was about 1.5, um, 1.4 to 1.5. Let's now, and, there's, and there is actually, you can go a lot more detailed on the matrix and where you enter the matrix, but there's <coughs> a lot of things that go into a step increase. Um, and it's not just performance, uh, it's qualifications. How valuable are you to the town? Mm -hmm. Are you a level four licensed individual? Are you level five licensed, level six? 
Um, when you gain those steps in mm -hmm. training or safety or whatever the requirement is that mm -hmm. you have a license for, yeah. you become more valuable to the town. And that also, as well as good performance, uh, draws the, mm -hmm. the requirement to do a step increase. If you don't have that, then the manager should be mm -hmm. able to say, in most places that I've been, your boss or my boss would say, you have $8,000 for pay increases this year. Divvy them out and you tell me the justification for how you divvy them out. Okay, they don't tell me how and what to give uh, other than COLA. COLA all, always has been done in every, every job that I've ever been in has been put into the chart before you yeah. even start the discussion. And then uh, after that is done, then you start the discussion for steps and grades and, and job performance. COLA is nothing more than a, than, than a, a reflection of, 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 of inflation, right. period. Yeah. And it takes it out of the employee uh, 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 indicator. Uh, mm -hmm. that's how I think my concern last year was just that we yeah. peg it to something right. we can print and point to. That was all. Because yeah. last year there was, it was sort of like a... We were in a range, right? So, I'll, and, and so yeah. I stand by what I said last year. If we yeah. have, if we can and, point to and that, it, then it was. I was at the meeting, and it was okay. It really was closer, like I said, to 1.3. But the board of selectmen, I think you moved on that. To, well, 1.2. You have. I mean, if you say go, pay grade eight, going from two to three, you're picking up another. Two percent. Two percent. Each each step in the chart so, is yeah. two percent. It's actually a three point two percent raise. Right. 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 But it's not a rate. It's not a three point two percent raise. No. It's a two percent raise. One point two percent cost of living cost adjustment. Of living adjustment. Right. Right. Well, one of the things Gordon mentioned, you know, is this just based on number of years that an individual has been with us or is it merit? No, and I longevity can, merit. Longevity that, can yeah. include be included but not But it's always. not like with the school teachers where it's right. okay. Every we have a longevity that. bonus. Mm -hmm. right. but we also... But it's mainly merit. Yeah, right. month, month merit year, and quarter we look at all of them. Worth to the Correct. company. Yeah. Worth to the town. If you have a guy come into the road agent department that has a CDL, he's going to be worth a lot more than having a guy that comes into the road agent it doesn't have a CEO. Okay. I don't know that there's any one right, you know, measure for the town of Tufton, <coughs> but you have to use what's available. And I think, in my opinion, the best available is the Northeast number, because it's the closest thing we can come to. Yeah, we wouldn't want to use any other part of the country, that's mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. The only other option is to do what we were talking about, you get 15 or 20 items that are never going to go out, and on the same day, the next year you do it, and that's how much inflation is. That's how much the prices have gone up, and it's got to be a very group of stuff. But that's a lot of work <laughs> so for a very minimal, for a very minimal. I've done it, so. Yeah. yeah. It's basically what the actuarials do in, in the insurance. I mean, the, the farther you right. spread your numbers, mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the more you can depend on the percentage that comes up. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's uh, it's part of the problem when you want you want the budgets completed earlier. Part of the problem is a lot of those numbers that they use for Social Security, uh, you know, you have you have two COLA uh, amounts. Uh, there's a CPW, uh, there's two different uh, numbers they compute. And usually they're not finalized until later on. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like the end of October, or beginning of November for the next year. So it's a best guess. Um, this appeared to have been completed as of that date that you needed it. So, which helps us. If you want the budget earlier, we have to have that in order to do. Yeah. I, I think we can. Oh, go ahead. Uh, I think we can vote on this. There's no health insurance. We just pay. Mm -hmm. 
And I, you know, you talk about what is it, the administrative budget, but all of the actual salary amounts are in the individual departments. These won't be in there, right? But the benefits part of the salary, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a separate issue. Separate issue. Uh, I'm still not convinced, but that's all right. Uh, you can make a motion to go ahead. I, I'm torn because uh, I don't want to vote. But if you make a motion to vote, I'm going to have to vote no because I have no other choice. And I don't think that's fair to Clay or his employees or anyone else. However, you're welcome to make the motion and I will vote as I feel I have. Okay, we'll wait until uh, ship returns here. Okay, please. Let's, may I have a motion to approve um, Clay's budget number? I put glasses on. Mm -hmm. I'm fourth four. And, and 419. Ah, yes. Excuse me. Um, Diane did explain to me that that budget gets voted kind of near the end because it's, um, even though she just shows Clay's portion of the general fund, it doesn't oh, you include, want to include the, the, all the, other the things maintenance of, yeah. and all the other stuff. Yeah. So, so are we going to vote on this part or hold it? Not the general fund part, please. Just no, just but on, yeah. on this part. Oh, yeah. We would page. vote on 4324, but not on the Not on, uh, what is it, 4199? Yeah, 4199. Okay, got it. Thank you. I right. move that we approve the budget of 4324 in the amount of $365,622. I have a second, please. Second. All in favor? Okay. It is 6 1 with um, Guy voting no on that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And because I just keep track. I think I've explained it over and over again. Could you explain I feel it's out of sequence to do to vote on a budget that includes salaries until we have approved the personnel administration budget. Even though there are other things in it. That's just my feeling. Okay. Clay does such a good job. It's laid right out there so the numbers are there. Thank no you doubt about that. Thank, Thank you, Clay. Thank you. We'll move on then and look at number 4153, legal, please. I just thought as long as we were on the budget roll, we tried these don't require an appointment for anyone, so I thought we could just jump through them. All right. Does anyone have any comments, questions and on I have questions. My question is there any outstanding invoice in the last in the last quarter? Are we overspending or underspending the budget? Can you help us with that, Karen? I don't know the answer to the question. But that's a Diane question. That's a Diane question? Okay. Yeah, we're perilously close to overspending the budget. So, mm -hmm. And that's with that, that's with uh, issues that are come to fore already, not anything that could be coming up in the last quarter. Right. Okay. And nothing new on the horizon. Um, it's always something new on the horizon. Well, and I'm wondering, he seems to lag a little in his billings. If, and have we settled the lawsuit we had, the utility lawsuit? That was a big part of it last year. Do we know what? Where are we with that? That's still in question. That, that's, that's in the process of being settled. And okay. um, we've determined. I think the direction we're going as far as tax and the utilities. Yes. <clears throat> the, uh, the three different utilities, they need to go to the superior court and say they accept the final finding of uh, uh, the courts. And it was a slam dunk for uh, the 22 towns. Yeah. How do we stand on the Steinman lawsuit at this time? Do we know anything about that? We haven't received a bill for it, um, and I, I know there's a, 
there was a hearing scheduled and that got postponed or can't got postponed. So that's probably going to happen in 2018. So are we? I guess my question was, um, why do you expect the expenses next year to be as high as they were this year? Well, it would be nice if they weren't. I, I think it's it's difficult to say what's going to happen mm -hmm. next year. And given the ongoing um, legal issues that have happened this year, I can't see it's going away. I mean, the, the same players mm -hmm. are doing the same, bringing up the same issues, which seems to require legal help. Um, I don't know why we stopped putting um, money into the ZBA account, because the ZBA did have a lawsuit this year that was... It was way, I mean, it, it, it was, uh, <clears throat> yeah, we did have a, yeah. but when yeah, it makes sense, as well as... Uh, but it's always been, uh, in my recollection, uh, this, this account has always been a guesstimate, because you, you don't know what's facing you and the over that upcoming and, uh, and try to, to, to guess it as quick as best as you can but uh, and in this case if we if we go over there have, have there been years that I think that we've been under mm -hmm. uh, which again goes into your fund but uh, I, I think based on, on the amount of activity that we had this year it, it looks like we the guess was was not too bad uh, when we when we did the 42 eight. Uh, I, I don't know if I'd want to go any higher and hope that things wouldn't hmm? get out of hand. When I look at 2016, when we were at 23 one, 2956. Right. But. 14 year at 46,000, 15 year at 42,000. Yeah, yeah that's true. So you just do bounce. You look around. at the, the, it does the cycling around. on it and yeah. it, it, it comes out pretty much. I mean, we're going to try to avoid litigation as much as yeah. possible, but it's impossible to avoid it completely. And we can hope the new chairman doesn't want to Position together, and the court has ruled. So now it's just a matter of that being so hard. Okay. I'll move the uh, I'll move the call on out for uh, for the 153 account. We go to uh, 42,000 here dollars. Do I have a second? I'll second All that. Right. All in favor? Aye. 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 John No and Guy No. Five. Five, two. Could I have John's reason? Did you think it should be less? Yeah, I voted no last year. I just think it's too, seems like a lot of money for legal. I think if it's there and available, it's going to be used. Okay, right. I, I think it's just too simple to give him a call and say, oh, and then now you're giving lots of questions. I just think it's too high. Okay. So, what would you do in, in terms of protecting the the, the town, if you didn't follow up on the legal aspect of a, I think you, of a you charge, you can certainly protect the town. I just don't know. How, like you said, it's just a guess. Forty thousand. We seem to just I, I think come right in at our budget every year. So, but, but it's not a dark board guess. It's a, it's a, it, it's based <coughs> on on activities and uh, and uh, some historical information. You you always hope that you're going to come in less, but. Right. How, how do you how do you uh, how do you avoid somebody suing you? Uh, and and if you do, you've got to you've got to take the, the the legal action to protect the, yeah. the interests of the town. I don't disagree. I mean, but if you look at the old numbers, it's not always. It goes from forty to seventeen. I mean, you could throw any number in there. I'm not disagreeing with you that you have to protect the town, but where was seventeen, John? Yeah, 2012. Twenty. Oh, 20. Well, no, it's just legal. Those are the planning, those are the... Well, that's all this is part of the bottom Right, I'm just saying, that. I'm just looking at just the... Yeah. And Guy, less or more for you? $20,000 less. Okay. I have no faith at all in the Board of Selectmen's ability to manage this budget. budget. 
And unfortunately, just like when Albie's been thrown into a, a situation he didn't really ask for, and despite his even-handedness and common sense approach, uh, <coughs> money was thrown away on a lawsuit that didn't need to happen at all against the advice of the New Hampshire Municipal Association. And money was spent that didn't need to be spent, benefiting only the town's attorney. Okay. And this is something we can always revisit down the road. Okay. Let's um, move on to direct assistance, 4442. Chip to talk about this one, if that's all right. Uh, Chip, I, I know that the Board of Selectmen made a couple of um, cuts here in shelter and in food. Mm -hmm. and I thought you might want to talk about that. Well, we actually, I'm the selectman in charge of uh, direct assistance. And what we looked at was how often we were able to get local charities, local churches to step up to the plate and help out people in need. And this is all about people in need. It's shelter, fuel, medical services, food, electric and telephone, a small one for miscellaneous. So it appeared as though over the course of the year, although the number of cases hasn't dramatically been reduced and the economy is reasonably stable, that um, in the shut in in food and shelter and electric, the um, local charities have stepped up to, to help folks out. We we had a discussion about which lines to to reduce, and it, it came out of shelter, just because that seemed to be the least impactful. Um, so it's a five thousand dollar drop in. Well, and food too, right? Yeah. Did you cut in food? It has to be a, yeah, for a total of a five thousand dollar reduction. And we are very fortunate that our um, other services in town. But this is one of those areas we, by law, have to provide direct assistance. Uh, or, once again, uh, thank you. This is a cyclical in nature during the course of the year as far as the disbursement process. I mean, after, for example, after this weekend, Columbus Day, of course, we do see more demand for this in the fourth quarter and in the first quarter of the year than you would in the second quarter. You know, I, I was thinking quarter. the same thing when I came into this, that, that it's probably a seasonal issue. Yeah. Um, the fuel, obviously, is going to be a little more heavy duty in, this, in the colder seasons, mm -hmm. but it, it, it's really people generated, you know, their circumstances. We've got folks come in in June mm -hmm. who do the whatever circumstances they needed some help. Okay. And, you know, I, everybody's working in the summertime that these folks still needed some help. So I, I haven't seen a big seasonal impact, but I'll certainly, I'm certainly keeping an eye on it. And, you know, we do the best that we can. And it, as Carla said, you know, we're legally mandated to have this, but I think we're morally mandated to have it as well because I mean, we have to take care of our citizens mm -hmm. that fall in hard times. Yes. And believe me, they have to prove that they've fallen in hard times before mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. qualify. So. Any other mm -hmm. comments or questions? Could I have a motion to approve direct assistance for 442? I move that we approve. Um, 4442 in the amount of $25,000. Yeah, have a second. Second. Gordon, second. All in favor? Uh, no from John and no from Guy again. Okay. I have two same reasons you were hoping for less. Um, yeah, last well, year. Well, well, last year I voted to bring it down to 18,000 and we spent 13. So I think I was right in line, and but we bumped it up to 30. So I just think that, again, it's 
is too high. I don't think that I, I agree with all this, the reasons, and I'm not sure the whole town knows that they can actually get some of this stuff. But mm -hmm. I, I, I think I was right last year. So. I'm going to stick with it this year. There is no federal welfare, there's only a local welfare. Right, what did you come Last year we, we were coming at 30, and I, right. I suggested 18, I think, but we did an average, and we would have been right in line. Mm -hmm. It's just hard to see all that other just going to Okay, the and how about you, Guy? I had never approved of nanny state socialism, and I think that's what this is. Okay. I think there might be an opportunity with that too, though, because maybe they're, not everybody knows that they can apply for some of this stuff. Because right. I've actually had people ask me, and I've directed them down here, but I don't think people know. Well, and the guidelines um, are pretty strict. Yeah, and I don't think people necessarily want to get into yeah. it sometimes. But yeah, I think people are pretty Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. Uh, we have the the, uh, the Melbourne Village Church, which. Uh, that's done a lot. Puts a lot of money into that. I'm in total agreement with the churches, mm -hmm. organizations, not government. Okay. <laughs> Let's look at other government. Ooh. 4199. Oh, gosh. Good late night guy for that sort of discussion. What's that? Cheer up. Right. I'm going to town meeting when it was 2 o'clock in the morning. 4199. Uh, yes, 4199. A reduction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Percentage-wise, quite substantial. <coughs> <laughs> All right. Yes, from 850. $850 to 500 That's a good percentage. <laughs> it's a good percentage. Well, only top percentages. <laughs> I have a question. Yes. Uh, yeah. Um, what on earth is the Joint Loss Safety Committee? Because I've, I've read about it, I've tried to understand it, and I, I still don't get it. Joint maybe? Loss? What's the M? Management, maybe? Yeah. Uh, joint Loss Management Committee? Oh. Yeah. Um, okay. What do we got there? Right. What, what are they? What in losses any are organization? Are probably even something you've worked in. There's always a committee that oversees or inventories all of the safety issues. That oh, just safety. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Joint yeah. loss safety, safety, committee. safety committee. committee. So that if you, know, you need to be insured, you need to have compliance. Let's make sure all. Of, I don't know. Fire all extinguish. the electrical boxes have the yellow lines. Right. Mm -hmm. The fire okay. extinguishers are all in place. So these are these are people who work for the town and volunteer for this or are appointed to this, who inventory the town's assets and make sure that we're within safety compliance. All right. Plus it's educational. They uh, share it with the co-workers. Safety. It doesn't look like you've got any volunteer in the past five years. <laughs> <laughs> any other questions? You can volunteer. <laughs> sure. I'll move uh, other government, uh, other general government, four one nine nine, in the amount of five hundred dollars. May I have a second? John, have a second. All in favor? Seven zero on that one, Karen. Okay, let's look at patriotic purposes. Number, Number four five eight three. Mm -hmm. Any comments, questions on this one? This must be a long time we get every year. Looks like. It. Looks like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And these are the people that put the flights in the cemetery and all that. Yes. Sir. Mm -hmm. All right. I have a motion to approve four uh, five eight three for fifteen hundred. All right, may I have a second? Second. Guys, second. All in favor? Okay, 7 0 on that way, Karen. I don't kneel, Okay. I was going to kneel tonight. We're getting down to the end, the last two here. Oh, wait, I've missed one. Give some donations. Four five eight nine. Yes, four five eight nine. 
gifts and donations for five hundred. What is this for again? I buy a vowel. Pardon me? I buy a vowel. Um this is for instance seventy-five dollars was given in memory of our um, cemetery sexton last year when he passed. Um, we have five hundred in it. Well, I spent four thirty ninety nine and two sixteen. And before ninety nine seems up. Yeah. What was that? The ninety nine seems up. We're doing yeah, I know. But where did the 430 go? That's what I'd like to know. <laughs> Do you remember? I have to get the Did you get a gift? Pardon? No, you probably should look at me. Yeah. Okay. Did the selectman go out to dinner that time? <laughs> was I'll vote to spend $500 on that, right? <laughs> <laughs> Does that open this for discussion? Yes, I think we should discuss this. I'm not going to speak on my personal feeling here, but one of my constituents has commented in the past that it would be far more beneficial for individuals to contribute to uh, gifts and donations of one kind or another uh, so that they can tell where their money is going to go rather than uh, a board or a committee deciding for them. Uh, I felt obligated to bring that up. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? I guess the one occasion when we actually, while I was here, we spent seventy-five dollars. It was, um, I think, appropriate for the town to recognize that individual in the form of I don't even want to know what the seventy-five was for flowers. I guess I was in agreement with that being a cemetery trustee, especially knowing the man very well. Hey, I, there are occasions when the town needs to be, you know, needs mm -hmm. to make mm -hmm. his voice heard. Mm -hmm. So whether it's worth five hundred dollars. I mean, I'd like to review the 430 at some point. Do you remember, Lloyd, what that was for? Yeah, I draw a line. I, I mean, I think what, there should be something there. I'm, I, too, am just not sure if we need to have $500 here. Okay. I mean, I see a lot of it just dropping into the uh, undesignated fund. Right. In, in fact, bit. I'll make a motion um, to have it at 250 I'll second that. All in favor? So have we approved it at two fifty? Yeah, two fifty. Yeah. And that was seven zero. We don't have to close them anyway. I don't know what it's left in this year. Okay, let's look at our um, long term bonds and notes for seven one one. That's our fire station and ambulance note. I assume this is just based on the uh, amortization schedule. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't think we can. Yeah, what am I What are you going to do on this one? <laughs> I do have a question. Yes. Um, we're going to pay this ambulance and rescue vehicles uh, off rather quickly at the rate we're going, aren't we? It's yeah. a five year lease. Five years, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Refresh my memory. Thank you. I like that too. Do I have a motion? So moved. Uh, second. Would you want me not for the record? Yes, please. Uh, $236,554. May I have a second? I second. All in favor? Okay. Um, it was 6 0, is that right, Guy? That's correct. Okay. And 6 1, actually. Or 6 1. Yes. And, oh, and your reason? My constituents don't see the need for an ambulance and rescue vehicle at this time. Thought what we have is totally adequate and that the services to us provided is more than enough. And now 4721, the interest on those long term notes, the ambulance and the fire station. Do I have a motion to approve? So we'll Forty-four thousand seven hundred forty-nine dollars. Second. Okay. And. Oliver. Um, six one again, Karen. Okay. Same reason, correct? Uh, yeah, we have to be. 
But, and I, and I, the least, last thing I want to do is be argumentative, but if we already have a fire station with an amortization schedule and a debt, how can you not approve the contractual interest? Well, what we've got here is, is two different line items, okay? I'm not, and, I, and my constituents aren't voting or, or asking me to vote against the fire station interest or, or not to approve that. It's the ambulance and rescue vehicle part they have, but it's combined. But we have it already. This is not, this is not something that's new. I'll try to explain okay, that to them if you'd like, but I'm, I'm like, that's fine. I do represent people, not just my own self here when I vote. Well, and I, let me just say... And maybe I'm the only one that does that, but no, well, I doubt I, it. I, think I really we, doubt it. We all represent all. Well, <coughs> yeah, that's, I, I'm, I'm not quite sure. What is this constituent? I, uh, I thought we were here elected to represent and, and, and the town as a whole. for the town as a whole. Not just a few. Uh, uh, I, that, I'm, I'm not quite sure about uh, you know when you when you run for election and uh, and you're voted uh, uh, you're basically representing the town and not separate constituencies within that town if there is such a thing. I mean, every, well, whatever. Okay. Yeah, we're going to move on and um, so we let's. Hmm? So we thank you for everyone's input here, but it is what it is. Let's review um, our May 9th, 2017 minutes, please. I know I had just one question. Um, so I know, under um, <laughs> old business, first paragraph, when we talk about public input, we, um, it says Gordon Hunt moved to approve time limited. Did we have a time limit on public input? <coughs> or? I don't think we were talking about the time limit. I think we were referring to at the time as a okay. time limit per individual. Okay. All right, that we would pretty much you know, say, okay, you've saved your piece in three minutes or five minutes. But, uh, okay, well, I know the Board of Select, but for instance, they have public input and it's a 10 minute time block, I think. And I didn't, I could not remember to save my life if we voted on anything like that. But if we did not, that's fine. Um, anything else on the minutes? Yeah, on that and several other. Uh, Discussions. It says that all members agree to this suggestion, and uh, although I didn't speak at all, I did not disagree. However, that is not exactly the case because I do disagree with many of these things. Uh, I believe the public should be allowed to ask questions at any time during the meeting when the appropriate uh, department heads are here who can actually answer the question with some degree of accuracy. I also uh, don't think that uh, the board is sort of. Uh, Budget Committee should be in control of my uh, citizens' right to ask for information that I want at any time, which I will do, politely, and I've had good luck with that. So, uh, not all members were in agreement. This was no on, vote on taken. On which part? On many parts. On the, well, this. vote on the was 7-0 on this. We, that's a recorded that one is, vote. That's a recorded vote. The other is a request for documentation. And we I, don't, didn't. I don't mind paying, but we didn't vote. It says all members were in agreement. I, I said nothing, so I wasn't in agreement or disagreement. However, I, I love the 15 cents of coffee. That's great. I, I can afford to do that if I wanted something. However, if I wanted as a private citizen to get information, I would not bring that to the budget committee, since you did not ask for it. Well, no. What what this is talking about is yeah, if, here. if budget you, information. Budget information to be used here. Yeah. Well, the thing is, so bring it to us. Anything brought here, though, is public information. But if you are bringing, <coughs> if you want several documents, for mm -hmm. instance, and the rest of the committee is not thinking they would use those documents, then you can't say it's for the budget committee. Well, that's what I do. I would go as a private citizen. And yeah. Again, I would not bring that information to the budget committee. Okay. So I wasn't in agreement with that. Does it change the reading of the minutes? No, Karen had no way of knowing because we didn't take a vocal vote on that. I'm, okay. I'm just commenting on that. Okay. Yeah, no, Any other I, corrections the to the yeah. minutes? 
So did you want to take out the sentence that said all members were in agreement? I don't think it's truly worth her effort, to be honest with you. I just wanted to make my point. Okay. Um, do, are there any other corrections to the minutes? Nothing else? No. I have a motion to approve it. Second? Okay. Everybody All in favor? Okay. I didn't hear the second. Um, Pick an hour before you want to find it. Anyone? All right. That sounds so, good. While we're on minutes? Yes. There are two issues that. that uh, Time's up. No. <laughs> <laughs> that I was. To, uh, requested to look into one was getting the budgets to earlier, yes. and the other was to get the um, salaries together earlier. Okay. How did we do? I think you, well, we okay were here when we time? started. I think so. I'm going okay. over and so. right. okay. Yeah, okay. it's very budget. difficult dealing with an 18 month window yeah. in any budgetary process and done uh, over the years. All right, I'm going to try to get through the rest of this. Under correspondence, um, last year, I think those of you that were on the committee will remember that John did not vote on the Parks and Rec budget, correct? Right. And this year, Gordon said he would not vote on the library's budget. And when I went to the budget workshop, I did submit that question um, but they didn't have time enough to answer it during that time. Karen, and I asked the Board of Selectmen, Karen was good enough to email, and we did get a note back in regards. So this is their legal opinion. And it appears that there is no, oh, no real conflict. Um, nobody is getting any personal financial benefit from it. Um, now, if you had a spouse working in the department and you were voting on salary mm -hmm. or something like that, that's different. Um, what's that? It's an hostile Oh, do you have a spouse? Working? I do have a spouse, yeah. <laughs> no, is she working in the parks and rec and getting money? During the summertime, yeah. Okay, you can't. Well, you should recuse yourself. I, yeah. You uh, should. I didn't. I did. He did oh, last he did. year. Did. <laughs> yeah. Okay, then you can't. But Gordon could. Does your spouse read? <laughs> <laughs> Only the small words. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. Until she gets so her eye fixed, she's not doing a lot of reading. Though. I just yeah. thought we needed a no, little more of a Perfect. opinion on that. Yeah. Well, based on that, Based on this decision, that I very well might vote on the library. Yeah. Okay. Just hold your vote and take a look at how it's going, and then We're you We're not can. talking to <laughs> All right. Um, new business. CIP update. Helen. Um, CIP has um, had a meeting last week. We have um, heard the CIP request from the road agent. Code officer, transfer station, the police, the fire. Um, next week we will hear from the library on the 18th. Mm -hmm. And um, our capital capacity this year is $839,000. However, there um, are $397,000 that are already committed um, for things like the rescue one and ambulance and for the fire station plus when you throw in that we've got two hundred thirty five thousand dollars for the maintenance of the, or for the redoing the town roads that only leaves two hundred seven thousand dollars for other projects we have quite a few other projects among them thirty thousand dollars for a new septic system for the library mm -hmm. so it gets eaten up pretty quickly so we will probably be over our capital capacity this year. Okay. That's all I have to say. You said enough. <laughs> <laughs> Chip, do you have a, an update for us from the board of selection? Right, we've uh, started the process as you've seen. There'll be more budgets for you in the future. 
Um, a couple of things of note that we didn't talk about. One was uh, internet connection at the uh, transfer station. We're going to leave the capital line at 10 Prime, even though the building's been repaired and that work's done, it should drop. Um, Select and Wood was able to, along with Clay, negotiate a pretty favorable deal on getting internet connection and phone connection down to the transfer station, which should mean that our train line will drop next year. And hopefully our income will go up. The other thing that we're going to bring up, I don't know whether we'll put it in this year or not, but the um, still on the transfer station, the, the C and D revenue line, we've talked about extensively at the various selections meeting, is just, they're estimating how much is in a truck when it gets there. And, and we feel kind of, we're in agreement that there's some abuse of that. So we, our discussion is, to, is getting a scale. We're doing everything by weight. We're, we're shipping that by weight. We should bring it in by weight. So the cost of the scale and all the ancillary costs are, are going to be brought forward. I don't know that they'll be brought forward for 18, but they'll definitely be brought forward by 19. Right. Um, as I mentioned before, we're reviewing the health insurance. Hopefully by the end of this month we'll have a recommendation for the health insurance. Um, we probably will need some guidance on the sale of property with 50 grand short on that line. Um, and one thing that we haven't discussed yet, but we will discuss, is the, the level of the undestimated fund balance, which I think we need to agree that needs to be pegged to a percentage of the town expenses. And I'm, What's the percentage of our assessed value that we should keep in? Well, I think that if you anything over 10% is a little excessive. I mean, we used to run it at 5 or 8% mm -hmm. so of, our, of our operating budget. So I think when, when next we meet, I'll report to you on what we have, what percentage of our operating budget that reflects. And you're going to ask me to report on that. And That's and our eight. next line. And our, our hopefully finish. you and Gordon and John are going to <laughs> move on to a that. lot of stuff to say. <laughs> well, look, at, it's after eight already. We're not going to stay too much longer, but we were very well represented at, Tuftonboro was, um, at the um, budget <laughs> workshop. <laughs> it was a good workshop, <laughs> and um, I just wondered if John and Gordon Wanted to share anything? <coughs> Anybody ask any questions? Well, it's, it's as in the case with any workshop, you get you get twenty seven hours and you get about an hour and a half of really good pertinent information to what that we can bring back. And mm -hmm. Hearing how the city managers in Portsmouth and That's Rochester right. were dealing with their budgets and their computer systems and things like that uh, wasn't really germane to what I was looking for. But if you if, and I can see what, how they have to do it as an organization. If you had never had any budgetary experience in preparing a budget in the municipal level, it was a very good workshop. If you had experience in the past, you know, a, a lot of it was kind of redundant, but I'm very, I'm very glad it went. Okay. You know, and they, that spiral notebook that they gave, red notebook, is going to be a very valuable tool. Yes, yes, that would be a good one. I actually am reading that cover to cover because it's just, you know, I'm, I haven't done this for a few years, so but <laughs> well, no, no, I, you know, I've, I've done a lot of budgets for you know, yeah. numbers it, considerably it's a bigger than this, but, yeah. but it, it's been a while since I've done it, so it's good reading. Did they come up with, the, did they uh, discuss uh, new changes in the, in the law for the various uh, uh, articles uh, in, that, that uh, affect the budgetary process? Any, any changes in the RSAs and that we should be aware of that change from last year. You know, they just were really cautioning about the wording of warrants, but I think our board of select mm -hmm. do a pretty mm -hmm. darn good job yeah. and yeah. bounce it off from 
generally they, they you know, they'll, they'll point yeah. out those changes. I think are, one of the things, John, did you want to speak? No, I passed out the board. <laughs> I just, I wanted to say one of the things that really hit home for me is the loss of revenue sharing with the, between the state and municipalities, and that's going to just continue to be a struggle for us in, in so many areas. Um, and I did ha have, um, I was happy to hear from the lady from Portsmouth in regards to how she does graphing um, and pie charts mm -hmm. and, and that kind of thing. That was interesting to me, but long day, but a good day. Um, we got Helen. We yes. <laughs> I have all the um, right here. <laughs> um, but good. And then I did want to say that um, the songs we're talking about that we have a right to know workshop coming up Wednesday, December sixth, and there is the um, the big conference coming up November 15th and 16th that M NHMA puts on. That's in Manchester and the right to know one is in Concord, I believe. Yes. So. Again, yeah, on that, I, I just wanted to make, I mean, Guy had asked, all of our accounts payable folders are open to the public account. As our, our accounts are suitable, so we don't have a hell of a lot of those. Mm -hmm. But the payables folders are available at any time to look at. So. Okay. Um, did anybody have any questions on the third quarter reports? We have our expenditures and revenue here. Anything that. Um, I think it, as we go through each budget, it really is helpful and things do change. Um, I know you've been working with the road agent and yeah. that's coming around. Is, is there anything in here that jumps out in terms of... I think in regards to revenue, right, is revenue not selling any property that, that jumped out for right. me. Um, that represents, as you said, 50000 mm -hmm. but. Um, it's been made up to, to a certain degree by the uh, clay, mm -hmm. yeah. Do we get the meals to run at the end of the year? Yeah. It's nice to see some big rolling. Yeah. We just don't have revenue size. Yeah, we did get, you know, we have got some state highway on. Okay. Um, Helen. No, let's see, Guy, you're Go next. On. I had you on, you wanted to talk about annual reporting. You mentioned it in May. Yeah. You want to? Well, the big concern that we had was that it was with actually with actual total cost, for example, a fire department or whatever it may be. Uh, the chief brings in his budget, which he works hard on, but that isn't the total cost of operating a fire department. Obviously, we have other stations which are listed in other government buildings and scattered throughout the town report. Uh, Helen brought up the fact that her high checks and information does do the total. Mm -hmm. And after further consideration, I've decided that uh, if I really want to, and people ask me personally to do it uh, before the town report comes out or however it may work out, I can compile that information myself easily enough. I will take care of that for them. There's only a handful of concerns with it, uh, okay. so I'll not pursue but is it any further. information that is missing in the report? No, it's the there. Library? It's just that the, the, when you say fire department budget, that's good. But when you go to other government buildings, there's okay. things scattered around okay. that are part of operating a fire department. For example, the long-term notes and interest. It all comes into the overall cost. You know, of a mortgage in our buildings, just, you know, how to operate. Okay. It's just scattered around so that a lot of people have a hard time finding it okay. or understanding what other why and that kind of thing. And I think we'll be all right with it. Okay. Uh, we, I wouldn't bother to put a, any more burden on the select of the staff to do anything different than what they're doing already. And Helen, of course, is doing a great job. With yeah. It. And uh, Helen, are you okay continuing with the graphs? I have you yes. on next to that. Okay. I did. Um, I changed this one a little bit. I thought we could go back to five years. I've got information for seven years actually, but I think 
five is plenty. Mm -hmm. So I just, I redid it a little bit. Okay. I also redid the order. Um, I redid the order because I felt that in thinking about what we want from the town in the way of services and where we want our money spent, um, mostly we want fire, we want um, health and safety, mm -hmm. which is the fire department, the police, the transportation, and the highway. Then we have to collect taxes um, to pay for it and administer the town. So that would be the tax collector, town clerk, executive, and the planning and the code officer. And then we have uh, the cemeteries and the library as services for the town as well. So I, I changed the order of it a little bit. Mm -hmm which to me made a little bit more sense. So I did it on both of them. Well, thank you. I'm very happy to have you doing that. Um, I also did want to, along these lines, mention that um, one of the things that a few other towns are doing um, is a revenue chart. I don't know if that's of interest to anyone. A chart showing if that includes what we pay as taxpayers for the school. Um, that's such a huge, huge amount. So if you see a chart and you see our little tiny operating budget and, <laughs> um, and how much of the tax rate is ours versus the state. I don't know. How you would chart that, but she was well talking the, about the that. tax. You always give us a schedule of the breakdown of the tax, um, how much it is. The, it's oh, our operating the budget of the <coughs> CIP part, then the um, county, the um, home in the, at the county, and then also the. Um, how much is for the school? Mm -hmm. So that's, I mean, that's that's the sum total of the tax that we, our property tax. Okay. And and that was it, I think, on all of that. The only other thing I wanted to mention, and I'm backing up a little bit. If anybody is interested in taking a look at data, all data in New Hampshire, hard data, and it can be put into graphs, um, there's a new website. And it is nhpfc.org. And it's only been going since 2015, but from 2015 on, they have some pretty good information that compares all of the. Is that what they were talking about last year? I don't know if this is the same one. I could never get the one last year to work, but they have this one up and going. Carl, one more time. One more time, MH. N as in Nancy, H-P-F-C dot org. N-H-P-F-C. P-F-C. P-F-C. You never got that high? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Our next meeting date is October 24th. I'm sure you'll be... Hopefully it's not on a Wednesday. No. Yeah. The rest okay. of them will all be on Tuesdays. Okay, because Wednesday is... Definitely not a good day for me. I'm no, I'm missing me. designated survivor. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had a board of directors meeting. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I came here instead. Do I have any other public input tonight? I have a question. Oh. Go ahead, oh. Joe. For years, and I've been here for a while, I used to talk about a special warrant fund in reference to the transfer station. We're making a lot of money sometimes, and it goes into the general fund to offset taxes. There are little groups around here, like the Conservation Commission, was able to get up to $5,000 a year. Chips on Parks and Recs, they have a little thing. So, here we go, who has a collecting money in their own storage. How come we can't have a special warrant fund for the transfer station so that we could buy products that we need <coughs> instead of going to the people all the time? I mean, we're already in a business, so I'm bringing that, and people have brought this up front before, but it's always been knocked down, and it's never been carried forward. I'm just asking the question. And I'm thinking that that is something that is a good question for the Board of Selectmen, because they do all warrant articles, but I will say that's another thing that was suggested at the um, 
it's a budget workshop if to have ongoing capital reserve funds for these kinds of things, whether it be for even health insurance mm -hmm. increases mm -hmm. or things you need for a certain department. Uh, it's, it's just having another capital reserve fund. Uh, yeah, that said, I, I don't th I don't think I'm prepared to allow unelected individuals to gather revenue and expend that revenue. It's, I, it's I, I think that's a that's a really slippery slope. I don't think they could because it can't be done without appropriation. Yeah. 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 You had something you were going to say. Yeah, a comment from a taxpayer. He asked me to pass on that in his 30 years. Uh, Taxes have skyrocketed, and the level of services he gets from the town haven't done anything. So, stop the bleeding. I've done my duty. Thank you. Anyone else? Public input? Max. Okay, I know I started the meeting by saying please consider doing a budget that spends less the next year. I still want you to do that. However, the roads are really important. And I know that the road agent had talked to the selectman maybe last week, the week before, about doing his budget differently. I think he was, was saying that he wanted, was it the Warren article the same, but increased his budget so that he could do some of the prep work for the paving. However it ends up being done, I think that the roads are the most important thing in town because we all use them. The fire department and the police department use them. Uh, the school buses, you know, all of that. It is the most basic thing in town that the town takes care of on those roads, which are town roads, obviously. Not all the roads are town roads, but the ones that are town roads, it's the most basic thing that our town government is supposed to provide. And so in that area, I'm in favor of increased spending or spending more smartly or whatever, however it works out. The roads are very, very important. So I don't know when you're going to be discussing the roads, but please down the road. Down the road. Hold these keep that in mind. Um, and I also want to remind you of the difference between direct assistance, which um, you know is welfare, which uh, is different than you deciding to give other people's money to the charities of your choice. And that's what you all did last year. Uh, I suggested that everybody could give their own money. I challenged everybody at town meeting to go home and donate their own money to a specific charity. I went home. I donated to that charity. I know that Guy did because he told me. But online, on that charity's website, nobody from Tofton Borough donated. So unless you sent that charity a check in the mail and you know giving charity without bragging about it is better than uh, than you know bragging about it but if you did not send a check to that charity yourself you should be ashamed of yourself because you gave away other people's money and that is not charity that's redistribution of wealth thank you Max. so keep that in mind you're dealing with other people's money and it's not fair for you to okay. give it away to the charity of your choice. Thank you, Max. We can all make our own decisions. Okay, thank you, Max. I, one of the things I did want to say, and I don't mean to cut you off, Max, but one of the things we decided in May was the public input will be only those items that are on the agenda. So bring that back when we talk about oh, the issue. Okay. Just to pull in, uh, one thing that I do remember from the um, from the training was that they actually did, they talked about that specifically. So when we got the letters from the organizations, um, that was a good thing, but we should just be cognizant of the ones that we didn't get letters for because that was part of the like, yeah. like we should definitely only give to the organizations that give us and those the letters. Ones that, say, that we know are yeah, helping. Well, last year I think there were some that were, they didn't well, give us letters. And, and with it, we should find out how many uh, town residents have been uh, Served by that, and uh, that was one thing that we're pretty up good for a while. with that, and that's why we can lower. But our there, we also have to discuss the the, uh, the, the economies of of, of, yes. of these contributions uh, and how they're multiplied because of their uh, uh, their that you have multi people uh, putting funds into that. So uh, I think there's there's more than than just uh, whether we'll have a good conversation yeah. about that. Yes. 
Do I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make the motion to adjourn. Okay, and a second from Bob. All Everybody in favor? Good. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.